This is where it all started. This is where I first heard about through hiking and the Foothills Trail. I was hiking with a friend and as we stopped to look at the view, this couple with these huge packs went past us. She guessed they must be through hiking and I was confused. What the heck did through hiking even mean? But as she explained, it was like this whole other world opened up. Trails no longer stopped at a waterfall or an overlook. They took you further on grand adventures, like the kind you would act out in the backyard as a kid. I ended up buying the guidebook a week later. Not so much as a plan, more like wishful thinking, but wishful thinking doesn't get you anywhere. Okay, I cut my hair. What's the big deal? Well, this was like a turning point for me. Something I kept saying for the longest time I was going to do. No more wishing. No more talking about it. It was time to follow through. My first full day on the trail. When I was planning it out, I thought I would take things kind of slow at first, but I was rested, ready to go. I wanted to take on some big miles today. The Chattooga River. If I had a nickel for every time somebody said, you know they film deliverance there, don't you? As if the villains depicted in the film were lurking around every corner. I just have to laugh at them because I've never found anything all that sinister about this beautiful place. Who needs a hotel when you've got Burl's Ford? No pesky reservations. State-of-the-art amenities. Complimentary water with unlimited refills. And every room has a view. It didn't really fit in my plan to stay the night, but it was a pretty fantastic place to rest up, refill, and shave off a few ounces before getting back on the trail.
I ended up making it to Sloan Bridge right before dark, and I was beat. My campmate was actually a veteran of the trail, working on his second through hike. After shooting the breeze with him for a bit, it was time to fix some good southern comfort food and start turning in for the night. I decided to bring along a trail journal. Nothing special, just some parchment paper stapled together. Somewhere I could write down those little details of the day, the things photos and videos don't really capture. Another long day meant another early morning and breakfast on the go. It also meant walking alongside a beautiful sunrise. I decided to take a mid-morning coffee break at Whitewater Falls. And while the view was nice, I can't say I appreciated the crowd of visitors informing me of all the big bad things I should be scared of out there. I'll tell you what I was actually worried about, that gap between the big rock and the bridge below the falls. Seriously though, what was I gonna do? Turn around and walk all the way back because I'm too chicken to make a little jump? Well, actually yeah, it crossed my mind. But thankfully, my campmate from the night before had already beat me there and was ready to lend a helping hand. Later that day, he told me this story from his through hike last summer. He was down at the Cantrell home site, refilling his water, and when he looked up, there in the tree was a gnome. No, really, I was skeptical too, but he had a picture of it. Baking soda is a must-have. It's great for washing dishes, laundry, and just about anything else that needs cleaning up. It can help defunk your walking clothes. It can even repel bears. Okay, well, I can't do that last part, it sure can make camp chores a whole lot easier.
Do you ever just wake up on the wrong side of the tent where you're exhausted and irritable? I'll tell you what, being smacked in the face by spider webs and tree limbs over and over definitely doesn't help. And neither do endless sets of stairs. And right when I decided, that's it, I'm done. I'm just gonna sulk here the rest of my life. Things started looking up. Next thing I knew, I was waltzing right into camp with well over half the miles behind me. There's this legend about the valley at the bottom of the lake. There was once this beautiful Cherokee woman named Jocassi, and she was walking in the woods one day when she came upon a warrior with a wounded leg. But despite the feud between their two tribes, she nursed him back to health and they fell in love. One day, Jocassi's brother returned from battle with the warrior's head on his belt. And in silent shock, she got into a canoe. But when she stepped out onto the river, she didn't drown. Instead, she walked out across the water to join the warrior's spirit. Jocassi means place of the lost one, or so the story goes. Today I was gonna make it to Chimney Top, but I was gonna have to tackle Heartbreak Ridge, Laurel Valley, and part of that climb up Sassafras to get there. It was gonna be the hardest day yet. But I'd been saving fresh clothes and fresh socks for this. I was ready to get my butt kicked. When it gets really tough, 
and I am on the verge of quitting. I try to remind myself of all the reasons why I love backpacking. Sunshine through a forest. Waterfalls. Wildflowers. Hot meals at camp. The satisfaction of crushing big miles in a day. Revisiting old memories. And making some new ones. I'm afraid I might have given up. I'm afraid I'm running low on love. I'm afraid that in the end you're more than I deserve. Every time I count my blessings, I count you first. I practically dragged myself into camp that night Every time I count my blessings, I count but boy am I glad Every I did I because I met I the coolest group of people <laughs> had like a red setting on this but it's like yeah somebody here has like the red light this is not very bright and then also not very bright <laughs> the two settings are not different there was singing snacking storytelling but best of all they told me all the secrets to digging a loo with a view. See, most people think of placing it at a beautiful overlook, but much more impressive is placing it where you can see all the goings on at camp, but they can't see you. It's a lost art, really. I really hated leaving my new friends behind, but they weren't heading my way, and I had a mountain to finish climbing. Thanks. I've been burning up the track like fire, fire see me through. Pick the right train now. See my face when I show don't need to tell me this is the right train. It's the right train. Pull my ticket, book my face, buckle up, let's go. I know that this is the right train. It's the right train. So, remember that gnome from a few days back? Well, he was still there. 
waiting right where I was told he would be. Yeah. I always heard the tribes that once lived here were responsible for the carvings. But a hiker once told me when a group of settlers asked the native people about it, they said it was there even before them. I don't know how much of that is true or just hearsay, but I think sometimes the mystery is better than the real story. The last night of camp is always bittersweet. Three days or three months, you're ready to go home, but also not ready for it to end. The last scraps in my food bag were looking pretty pitiful, but that's a part of backpacking, right? Doing what you can with what you've got. It turned out pretty good. It's not Katahdin, and it's not the Canadian border. But it's an incredible feeling, reaching Bald Knob. I'd come 76.2 miles 
but when I reached the trailhead, I still wasn't ready for things to end. So I decided to make a few pit stops before getting on the road. Like, my first proper shower in a week. The best restaurant in town. And of course, dessert. I hold on a life in the palm of my hand. I think God must really love this life. You don't have to drop everything and walk across the country to be a through hiker. Stuff came in the mail for you. Whether the trail's 3,000 miles or only 30, it's about taking the first step. Pink clouds rolling through like ships in the sky. I fell a sadness in my heart, but I don't know why. And then seeing what you started all the way through. 